All right, welcome to our chapter one lecture about the first Americans. I'm going to go very, very fast, but since this is a video, you can pause, rewind, do whatever it is you need to do. But let's jump right in. So we're talking about the first Americans. We're talking about our essential question today is how did the first Americans adapt to their environments? And this is going to be a very big theme that we're going to talk about throughout this chapter. So the first Americans, or sometimes we know them today as Native Americans or American Indians. I like the term first Americans. Um, they were here over 10,000 years ago, as opposed to Europeans who got here about 500 years ago, if you're counting Columbus as being the first European to get here. Leif Erikson, who was a Viking, got here about 1,000 years ago, but uh, they didn't really settle here for very long. Uh, so we, we talk about it, Europeans getting here about 500 years ago. Uh, first Americans did not leave a written record, so archaeologists and scientists, as your book points out, had to study artifacts to determine how these people lived. They also compared that to um, the landscape that they uh, interacted with and also oral traditions from the descendants of these people who are still alive today. All right, so just in general, um, the theory is that most uh, for the first Americans got here around about 20,000 years ago. Um, they were hunters from Siberia in Asia who were following big game, specifically mammoth. And over thousands of years, these mammoth were migrating along this route you can see on this map here. So back then during the Ice Age, because so much of the water was frozen, uh, a great deal of the, the, the ocean levels were much lower, exposing shallower areas um, and, and as, as land. All right. So... Um, back then, the area between Siberia and Alaska was uh, not covered by ocean or the Bering Strait, which we call today, but rather a land bridge that scientists call Beringia. So the hunters followed these animals across this land bridge over generations and eventually get into North America. Then about 10,000 years ago, the Ice Age starts to end. The ice melts, their ocean levels rise, and now these two continents are cut off from one another. Um, and so they start to develop their own unique cultures and ways of being. First Americans uh, started out as hunter-gatherers, but eventually many of them became um, agricultural-based uh, civilizations where they were doing a lot of farming. Um, Americans adapted to their environment, first Americans. They used natural resources, um, uh, what was available to them. Uh, and the book talks about uh, in the Arctic, you know, um, there were groups you can actually see here some of the hide tents that these groups made in the winter. They would follow caribou, excuse me, in the summer. They would follow caribou around. And uh, then in the winter, they would settle on the coast. They would build igloos and they would uh, hunt seals and whales and fish. All right. So uh, as you might guess, the resources that each group had available to them determine the way they lived. And so as a result, scientists today have been able to create cultural regions um, that sort of talk about, you know, sort of what, uh, what each group, how each group lived. And so their culture became slightly different from each other based on where they were located. All right. So here's the cultural regions you'll see in your book there. And so I'll just kind of let you look at that. But there's some other maps in the chapter that you'll also see. Um, so their clothing was determined by what was available. So if you can see that yellow area was mostly animal hide and fur. That blue area, that tiny blue area was cotton. That was a very small group of people who actually planted cotton and wove it into clothing. And then the green area was a, a variety of animal hide and plant-based material. Same thing with housing. It's going to be slightly different depending on what kind of materials are available. Food will be a variety of things depending on what's available. Um, and so basically that's how these cultural regions are different from one another. But in general, most Native Americans viewed their environment in a certain way. Um, most groups had some concept of the land, the plants, and the animals of each having some type of spirit um, that needed to be respected. And so hunting groups would usually give thanks to an animal after they killed it and recognize that that animal was allowing them to live on. Um, other groups that were more plant-based, a lot of uh, cultures, cultures that grew corn, um, corn was sort of the center of their culture and even some of their religious um, ideas. Uh, so land use was a little different than Europeans. Europeans and Americans today believe that land should be owned. Um, Native Americans do not believe that land could possibly be owned because it belonged to nature. 
but they did feel intense territorial connection to their areas and would sometimes fight one another for the rights for those areas and, of course, fought uh, Europeans who came along trying to encroach on those areas. Um, like Europeans, they used and even changed the land. Okay, these people were, uh, like I say, some of them were farmers. Sometimes they would clear out or burn out um, heavily forested areas in order to clear out for a field. But they're much less destructive than what we think of today when we talk about developing land. They usually had a concept that um, they might use an area and then leave it alone so that it could grow back. And then they would come back to that area later um, to, to, so they would still have sustainable resources that they could go to. So let's just talk about some of these cultural regions. So first of all, the American Indians of the Northwest Coast. Okay, so that's this yellow area here on the map. Canada and the northwest of America and Alaska. Um, so this is a beautiful area, lots of trees and a coastline. So this is a great uh, region because there's just tons of resources. So you can see right here on the slide, they had a variety of food, clam, seaweed, shellfish, sea mammals, fish, deer, elk, goat, bear, beaver, lots of different types of food. They also had more permanent shelter because they didn't have to move around looking for food so they could build these wooden lodges with these bark shingles and they wore animal hide and woven bark and they became builders and carvers and even today if you visit that area you'll see some amazing carved structures if you ever see a totem pole that's this group of people um, and so they were able to uh, do some some really you'll see this sort of theme throughout as we talk about each of these groups the groups that have a harder time surviving, spend more of their time looking for food and less time on uh, decorations or developing other types of skills. And then areas where there's a lot of resources, these groups are able to develop more um, intricate sort of uh, decorative clothing and, and artwork. So it's kind of interesting. American Indians of California, this is a very diverse environment. There's deserts, there's forests, there's lots of different people. So there's a lot of, there's a real diversity in this California area. But there's a, a picture of the, the woodlands of California. As you can see, lots of different food types. Their shelters were cone-shaped with various coverings, depending on what was available. In the wooded areas, those coverings might be more leaves and branches. In uh, areas of more grassland, they might be weaved woven grass okay so a lot of clothing uh, was made of animal hide or grass skirts and this group in general was a weaving group they would weave plants and leather together to to make useful things like baskets or nets or or traps or clothing the great basin area is actually um, a little bit drier it's got extreme heat and cold so there's fewer people living there and they had to move around a lot in search of food um, their food was usually smaller things like seeds and berries, rabbits, birds, snakes, lizards, even grasshoppers. Um, so here's a picture of sort of what the land looks like there. So their shelters were even more sparse. They were caves or sometimes small, smaller cone-shaped lodges made of willow poles and covered in reeds. Their clothing was mostly rabbit hide because that was the most plentiful animal that they could use skins from. American Indians of the Plateau had a little bit more resources available to them. They had colder, cold winters, mild summers. They had wooded area, grasslands, and two large rivers. And here's a picture of one of those rivers right there. So they had lots of different food. Whether Where there's water, there's plants. Where there's water and plants, there's animals. So they ate deer, antelope, roots, salmon, which was their most important food source, wild carrots and onions. Their shelter, they would, they would dig into the ground, so they were partially underground huts framed with logs covered in saplings, reeds, and mud, and their clothing was mostly deer skin. And because, again, they weren't using so much of their time and energy just surviving, you see more decorations on their clothing with seeds and shells. American Indians of the Southwest live in a very unforgiving climate. Deserts, mountains, canyons, and mesas, it's very hot, um, but it's also beautiful. Um, so from your book, it says the whole Southwest was a house made of dawn. This is a, 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 a Native American song. There were many colors on the hills and on the plain, and there was a dark wilderness on the mountains beyond. Um, so most of these people, um, actually, they, they were, these were farmers. They learned how to plant because it was hard to find food on their own. They had to grow it. Beans, squash, and especially corn. They would hunt small game. 
since there was a, a, not a lot of material to build out of, they would actually make bricks out of clay. We call this adobe. And they would build these almost like apartment buildings today. If you've ever seen the pictures of cliff dwellings, like from Mesa Verde, that's these people. They uh, grew cotton and spun it into cloth. So very advanced, not, not really the primitive thing that, that we think of or that Europeans thought of Native Americans. These were really advanced civilizations. All right, the Great Plains is probably the most famous group of Indians. You see them on movies and on TV a lot. Um, these lived when mostly in grasslands. They did some farming, but the, the buffalo or bison were the most important thing to them. And they used pretty much every part of the buffalo. Their clothing was made out of buffalo hides. Their lodges, their teepees were made out of buffalo hides. Their spoons, their tools, their weapons, everything was made out of some part of the buffalo. Their culture revolved around the buffalo, and their religion was, the buffalo was an important part of their religion. Later on in their history, as Spanish explorers come, um, they start being introduced to the horse, and the horse becomes also an important part of their culture because it makes them better at hunting buffalo, and it makes them more powerful warriors in order to um, fight off other groups that might be uh, encroaching on their area. Then there's the American Indians of the Eastern Woodlands. These are the Indians you see in movies like Pocahontas or Last of the Mohicans, even though Pocahontas is not an accurate movie. Uh, again, this area is plentiful. There's lots of lakes and streams and forests. And so these people have a variety of food sources. They have deer and bear and beaver and fish and nuts and berries. They are both hunters and farmers. They're able to make more permanent shelters called longhouses which are, the, uh, are these long wooden logs covered in elm bark, and multiple families would live in longhouses, usually relatives of each other. Um, their clothing was mostly deer hide. The women did most of the farming, while the men were more hunters and warriors. And even though they could travel by foot, as you can see from the picture, there's a lot of heavily wooded areas, and so uh, it was hard to travel by foot uh, sometimes, and so a lot, of, a lot of their travel was by canoe on the rivers, and they made, they put a lot of their villages right up on the riverbanks. Then finally, this is a, a group, a really interesting group that you probably don't hear a lot about. This is the Southeast uh, uh, group. And they have rivers, valleys, coasts, mountains, and, and swamps. Okay, so it's very humid. There's very mild winters. So um, farming is easy for them. They did a lot of farming, especially of corn, um, but also beans, squash, pumpkin, potato, and they even did some hunting, even occasionally of alligator and turtle. Okay, they made their homes out of wood-framed houses covered in mud plaster with pointed leaf-covered roofs. Mostly wore deer hides like, like many other groups. And um, some of these groups in this area were what we call the mound builders today. Um, you may have heard of Cahokia. You'll read about that in your book. These are these great big mounds of earth that they would move and they would make designs out of them. There's one that looks like a big snake. There's others that are like temple uh, or pyramids, but with their tops cut off, and they would build uh, sacred sites up on top of them. And then the towns were built around these these big mounds. There was a plaza, and these really became really large areas. Cahokia was a large area of civilization. There were like 20,000 people living at one point in Cahokia, um, which is just much more advanced than most Europeans thought of the Native Americans as being. Um, and that's really what's important to, to realize about, uh, about this group of people. Um, down here at the bottom, it says they were the first farmers, city builders, and hunters in America. Um, they developed the first language and lifestyles and were really much more complex and advanced than we give them credit for even today. But just in summary, remember the migration routes. They came from Asia across the land bridge to North America. Then the Ice Age ended and that land bridge was covered in, in ocean water. Indians view their environment with a great deal of respect. There's some spiritualism to that. To, they believe they are part of nature and they need to maintain a balance with nature. Um, it provides everything for them, so they must respect the spaces where they lived. They adapted to their environment and their culture was determined based on the kinds of resources they had, food, shelter, clothing. Um, so that's just a uh, brief, very brief rundown of those cultures. And uh, that's just something important to remember is that those cultures develop based on what was available to them. All right. Thanks a lot.